It's been a couple of years already doing some DIY electronic projects, designing PCBs and then buying the individual components and soldering them onto the PCBs, one by one. But JLC PCB has a new service called SMT or Surface Mount Technology. With this service you get the final product without the hassle of buying new components and then soldering one by one, which saves a lot of time and money. Today I'm gonna show you how to do the process of designing and ordering a small electronic circuit which is a strobe navigation light for my RC airplanes. Let's get started. Alright guys, so I'm gonna show you the whole process from beginning to end until we get the final product and we're going to actually put it in my RC airplane to see how it works. So this is so good because I don't have to solder anymore. Everything will be done at the factory and I just get the final result. So we begin by doing the circuit. So we're doing the schematics. It's extremely simple. This is using a 555 timer and some very basic components. And by the way, um, to know exactly what components to use, you need to go to the JLC PCV website and go to resources, SMT, and there you will find a lot of um, uh, details about the service. For example, these specs that you need to meet when ordering your, um, your PCVs or your circuits. It has to be two layers and a minimum size of 20 by 20 millimeters and a maximum 480 by 320 and so on. You also have 689 basic components and 30,000 or plus extended components and you can also check that the components library in this link. So we click in there and we see all the components that they have and if we are looking for the 55 timer then we see all the, the components that meet that name. So for example, we're going to use this one because it's a basic part. And if you don't use basic parts and instead extended parts, you're gonna have to pay $3 extra for the, I think the labor required to change the reels in the machines or something like that. So, so here, here they explain that the basic components are already loaded in the machines and the extended components, they can use it, but they will charge $3 extra per component. So just bear that in mind when designing your circuit. In my case, I'm gonna use only basic parts, so that would be as cheap as possible. So after you uh, finish designing your schematic with all the components, and by the way, I'm gonna show you how to select the components, for example, search here, whatever component you want, resistor, right sister just look for the ones that have this icon SMT or assembled that means that it's uh, used on those machines or for the service so if if they have that symbol that means that you can use it here so so select ECDA then SCH libraries or PCB libraries yeah it has this select this one and then you can see here assembled so when you select assemble you have all of these components that are for this service so if you write resistor i search for that then you see all the the available components for this service and also if they're extended or basic so let's choose basic basic ones also you can search for um, the kind of component resistor value and stuff but I already chose one. When you select one, then place, right? I found it easier to go to the to this link that they provided here, search for any component in here. And when I find the component I want, I just copy the LCSC part number and paste it on my project here. So I'm looking for this one and it will show exactly the one I was looking at there. So I just place that one and so on. So build your circuit, very simple. If you don't know how to build basic circuits, well, that's another story. I'm just gonna show you how I build this one and then I'm gonna order it. And after you build this one, I'm going to convert 
let me save this first, right? And then convert to a PCB. No. And then it will create all, uh, it will put all of your components footprints, place them the way you want. So after you connect everything, like so. After finishing that, you will end up having something like this. Um, of course, without this, but let me show you what, what's that for. We go to panelize, panelize, apply, okay. So you will end up having something like this. This is your circuit ready to go. But because our measure, measurement from here to here, it's less than 20 millimeters. It's only 15 millimeters. It's okay on this side, but not in, on this side. We have to make it bigger, but I don't want my circuit to be bigger. I just, I'm just gonna create a panel. So we go here, here, and then panelize. And then we select the stamped hole. I create a second row and apply. So that will create this second thing here. It won't have anything in it. It's just to make the, the board size uh, acceptable for the machine or the process of SMT. And then we're ready to export. So for that, we're going to save. And you have to be sure that everything will work. Everything is connected right and so on. And we're going to do the final step to export everything and order your circuit. So let's go to generate fabrication file or Gerber. I don't want to check that because I have done that already. Okay, so generate Gerber. It will download your Gerber file and then we go again and export the BOM or BOM file, export. Go back again to our PCB and then go back to this one, export, export pick and place file, export. And that's all that you have to do. Then you have these three files that we're going to use to order our PCB or our circuit with all the components in place. So let's go to JLC PCB. Uh, we're going to order and we're going to uh, add our Gerber file. Let it load, select all of your parameters in here. After that, we go down here to SMT assembly. We activate it. Uh, choose the number of PCBs that you want. In my case, five will be enough. And then select on what side it will be assembled. You can only choose one side. So I'm gonna uh, choose this one because this is where everything goes. And then confirm. After confirming, you have to upload the rest of the files, the BOM file, so select your BOM file and your pick and place file. So that's it. We go next. That's a list of all of your components. So let's go next and it will generate a preview of your components and the rotation in these components are not right. But it says here that you don't have to worry about it because it's just a preview. So if you're not sure of the uh, rotation or the polarity, don't worry about it. It's just for preview purposes. So yeah, now we can place our order because everything is ready to go. So let's save to cart and we're done. We have only to pay. By the way, you will have some coupons that you can use to make it cheaper. And that would be amazing. So after that, we just pay and we are ready to go. The production process takes a little bit longer, but that's understandable because they are placing their components and you will save a lot of time. After several days, I get the box. Inside, we can find a lot of gifts, but I'm going to take a look at what matters, the PCBs. And they look exactly how I designed them. Let's take a closer look and see the quality of the soldering and overall. It looks pretty standard and I can't complain because my soldering is not better. And remember that this is done by a machine automatically. But we're not going to judge only by the look of it. We're going to see if it works. So I'm going to solder some pin hairs. This is the only thing I'm going to solder because we need to connect the battery and the LEDs. You can also solder the cables directly, but whatever way you choose, it doesn't matter. And 
Voila! It works exactly how it is intended to work. Then I was testing different voltages. 8 volts resulted into a very high voltage, so it burned the ship. So I recommend using 5 volts because it's the optimal voltage. Maybe the maximum voltage is close to 6 volts, but most of the people will be using 5 volts in their receivers in RC airplanes and drones. Also, that depends on the type of LEDs that you're using in your circuit. I'm gonna leave a link in the description for the type of LEDs that I'm using. And by the way, these are the only components that I had to buy myself for this circuit. There are several ways you can energize the circuit. The first one is by using an external battery, but I prefer to connect it to a spare channel in a receiver because it will provide 5 volts. Also, the circuit won't consume a lot of power because these lights only flash. So I took my circuit and put it inside my RC airplane and I did the wiring on the wings and put the LEDs on the tip of the wings. Connecting the circuit is very straightforward. I just had to do some connectors for the lights and the circuit. But other than that, it was very easy. And this is the final result. You can order this circuit by yourself using the link in the description below where you will find the schematic and the PCB ready to order and by following simple steps you can order this circuit but if you would like me to sell this circuit ready to go just let me know in the poll that I have there in the screen so let me know if you want me to sell this separately and that way you will also support the channel. For now I hope you liked this video and you found it helpful for your projects. And I'll see you in the next project.